everybody happy what the heck day is it saturday it's saturday right happy saturday evening <laughs> live tutorial um goodness gracious yeah we okay so i'm not gonna lie we here at the beating dreams just got totally involved in a conversation about thrift stores and what thrift stores are good to go at. I know, right? It's today, day. it's in person Mary Day. I saw an in person Mary. She had the most amazing. I had to pee. She had the most, well, I, and she was like, I mean, she was like a, she was the flash Mary. She was literally in and out. Um, she had the best sweater on though. It had uh, a spaceships that were, that were teleporting up Christmas gnomes. It was fantastic. Wow. Um, but yeah, we literally, um, at the Beating Dreams, were just discussing thrift stores. Ooh, thank you, Jen. This is, what is this hairstyle? Well, do you want the facts or do you want the fiction of the hairstyle? Because the facts of the hairstyle is that Elton woke me up at 3.30 this morning by trying to murder a fuzzy mousie on top of me and so I was up from 3 30 until 7 30 and then I fell back asleep um as far as like my hair is not that long you know so it's what it actually is it's a bun on the top and then I have like a little twist in the back that keeps and then there's all of the um little hairs that keep falling down so so yeah so Elton woke me up with his adorable self and then and then and then and then he woke me up at 3 30 a.m so you're like, okay, fine, I'm up at 3.30 a.m. and fine, I might as well at least get something done, but oh no, he woke me up at 3.30 a.m. and then he did this. Those are my legs he fell asleep on. So he woke me up and then fell asleep on my legs so I couldn't get up. So I finally, he finally moved, I did get up, I did get some stuff done around the house. Uh, but then it was 7.30 and I fell back asleep. And so then I had to um, super, super quick shower and get my crap together. And so this is what happened to my hair. Yes. It, it's, it's, a, it's a facsimile of what used to happen when my hair was longer. Except there's, once again, there's not enough of it to go up, which is why it has a little twist in the back. Also, I definitely have to um, redo my red because you can see a whole lot of my natural hair color coming through but welcome to the oh dear Lori yeah no I I definitely hadn't I, I mean I guess I had a choice but yeah Elton woke me up at 3 and at 7 30 I was kind of like nah, nah, walking around my house like a zombie I was like okay I need to go back to sleep the problem is I had forgotten what the actual timeline of my, my morning was, and so then I set my alarm for an hour too late. Corvus! Hi! Welcome back to the U.S. of A. I am so sad that you're actually farther away from us now than you were when you were in Mexico, but how was your trip? Internet is good. We like that. Okay, so this evening's tutorial is this one, creating textured components in metal. So it's going to be a pretty quick one because um, I'm not actually going to make a bracelet. I'm just going to go over several texturing techniques that you can use to make... What? Hi! Oh my gosh, 14 people. Hi everybody. How are y'all doing? Um, I love that there's 14 people on stream and I forgot to do my eyebrows this morning. So that's freaking fantastic. Um, but I'm just going to talk about how you create textures in metal and then how you use tools like a disc cutter or a metal shears, which I don't... Hey, Heather, is there a metal shear somewhere on that table? Um, how you can... Uh, well, mine, I took... They were in that bag. And... Sorry, just if you see one, don't throw it at me because ouch, but just bring it over here. Okay, no problem. Okay, yay, Heather found a metal shear. So then after you've textured things, how you can use tools like a disc cutter or metal shears to create your components. You're amazing, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And I will let you get back to what you were doing now. So, um, Corvus ate all the things. I'm going to regret this. 
I'm just saying right now, I'm going to regret what I'm saying right now. I'm regretting it as it's coming out of my mouth. Corvus, what did you eat when you were in Mexico? I regret that for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I regret it already, and yet still, I want to know. So, while I am waiting for Corvus to completely destroy me with all of the amazing things she ate whilst she was in Mexico, I'm going to talk about how do you make texture in metal, okay? So metal is um, ductile. Basically that means that it can be flexed, dented, stretched, and shaped. This is why we can take a metal bezel and we can stretch it over a stone to set it. This is why we can take a hammer and we can impress a texture onto our metal and the metal will stay that way. This is why we can take a flat piece of metal and we can curve it using a dapping block and dapping punches. So the ductility of metal is what makes it so versatile so that we can use it for all of these jewelry things. Um, but who wants to stick with plain old smooth metal when you can put textures on it? So let's talk about multiple ways you can texture metal. I just realized that there's a couple more poundy things. I want this poundy thing. And then I, I'm going to need to use the drill at some point, though not necessarily now. So, how can you texture metal? You can, and, and I'm not going to do a tools and supplies because this is more of a kind of a, a, a panorama of, hey, this is all the stuff you can do. And the only reason that I that I made it into a bracelet was just to make it pretty for photographs. But my goal with this tutorial is more to just kind of show you how can you do these things to metal and then you can do them, do with them whatever you want. So things you can use to texture metal. There are a lot of the I knew I was going to regret that. I know I asked for it. It still sucks. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and be sad for a minute and I'm going to bang on metal to get out all of my frustrations because I, I, I had reheated pizza for dinner last night. Very sad. Though I did acquire two uh, yesterday, randomly, at my offsite, I acquired two Latina tias who uh, are, are very interested in, in my life with my mother and, and very interested in um, fixing it, which is pretty hilarious. It's a really funny having people who are not only completely um, divorced from the situation personally, like they don't know my mother, <laughs> they don't know really anything about our situation, they only know me. And, and then culturally divorced from the situation, like I am Midwestern, Midwesterners are passive aggressive, like passive aggressive is how we roll. Um, in my experience, most Latinx cultures, passive aggressive is not their thing. No, aggressive aggressive is their thing. And so they were, um, I mean, you can come with me to my offsite, Mary, and like there, I, I've been calling them my, my Latina god tias. Um, Corvus, how do you say god, fairy god, how do you say fairy godmother in Espanol, please? Um, because I would actually like to know how to say that, because that's kind of what they are. They just kind of swooped in, and, and I, and they were like, and I was really tired yesterday, I was talking, and they were like, what are you doing? And, you know, we were talking about Thanksgiving, and I'm talking about how you know, I'm not looking forward to it and this and that and like, oh honey, oh mama, no, no mama, you don't do that, you know, you don't do that and, and I'm like, you know, and they're like, well, why don't you get to spend Thanksgiving with your friends? I'm like, well, because my mom doesn't want to be with my friends, my friends don't want to be with them. I'm like, oh mama, no, 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 mama, like, okay, Thanksgiving is in a week, but Christmas, she's like, they're like, Christmas, you have Christmas at your house, you say, mama, I'm Christmas at my house with my friends, you can come if you want. I'm like, my, my Midwestern self is like, I do what? 
but but you uh, the, it, like I'm serious there were so many just like truncated consonants that happened uh during that conversation I was like but the but that but that, that that that's a thing you can do really like it's it's just uh, just the perspective of someone who is completely not only fit, um personally divorced but culturally divorced from the situation like it's it's literally like a revelation like they the it's literally like oh my god Ada Madrinas? Mad Madrinas? Ada Madrinas? Uh, yeah! Okay, Corvus, type it phonetically, please, I'm white. Let's talk about texturing metal. Oh, I got it! Yay. I win! <laughs> Yay! Alright, Ada Madrinas. I'm gonna need to screenshot that, excuse me, because I'm not going to remember it though. Pam's like, stop talking about your dysfunctional family and let's do some beating. That's a really good point. Thank you, Pam. Okay, so let's talk about texturing metal now that Corvus has taught me how to say fairy god tias in Espanol. So, if you're going to texture metal, basically you, you have to you've got to alter the shape of the metal somehow. So that means you either have to impress something into it or you have to remove some portion from it. So impressing some shape into it is obviously the easiest and um, the most common um, and, wh and what I did with most of these. So this is um, a letter stamp texture. That is the letter K all over k k k k k k k k k k k um this is a centering punch that's this little pointy thing um that i just used and this is another fun um technique is to just use it on part of your metal not the whole thing this is a riveting hammer i will do some with that this is um this is a filigree which i have a filigree here. I'll show you how to use that in a second. And um, this one is just your chasing hammer with the round end. And then this one is the removal, um, basically making a Swiss cheese texture. I did this with a centering, or sorry, with a metal punch. I can't find my metal punch, so I'm going to do it for you tonight with a drill. So you got two ways that you can do this. You can um, Texture, you can cut your circles and then texture, you can texture, then cut your circles. I'm going to texture, then cut my circles. Um, and once again, you don't have to do circles. You can use your metal shears to cut whatever shape you want. But let's talk about, and I haven't moved my camera, so it's going to get really earthquakey. I'm sorry. Um, okay, but let's start with the easiest and simplest one, which is going to be chasing hammer with the round side. So I've got a piece of 24 gauge sheet metal. This one's bronze. You could use bronze, copper, brass, sterling, silver, gold filled, whatever you want. There's no heat in this particular tutorial. So, you know, any metals fair game. So if I just take this, like I said, sorry, earthquakey. I'm actually going to un unhand cam that. So I just pound all over this. Okay, I feel bad about this. Hold on. I'm moving my camera because I feel bad. I feel like I'm not giving you all the tutorial that you were looking for, so I'm moving it off to the side. Also, by the way, new favorite song in my life. It's a country song, so anybody who is allergic to that, I apologize. But anybody who, who can tolerate country um, in their life, look up the song Biscuits by Casey Musgraves. And I have not researched Casey Musgraves. I have no idea if she is problematic in any way as far as political leanings or other things, but I do know that I love this song because it kind of is the story of my life lately. 
So, yeah. Um, if she is problematic, I would appreciate if anyone would tell me, because I don't, I don't want to be um, recommending art from problematic artists. But um, yeah, I, I still, the song is fantastic. Sorry, any song that has the the lyrics "Mind Your Own Biscuits" is is good in my opinion. Okay, so I've moved this off of the poundy surface, so hopefully I can now pound and things won't be completely earthquakey. Um, ooh, okay, off topic, Pam asked, do I, do we ever shorten the needle on the end of a, of a carded silk? So, um, in my experience, trying to literally shorten it by cutting it shorter tends not to work well because what happens is the, the, the wires that are twisted to make the needle, they tend to kind of go ding when you cut them. Um, what I will typically do, and it's not great for your manicure, but I'll run the needle through my um, thumb nail and my index finger. That will... Corvus! Is it, is it a taco? I have to... I'm sorry, but I have to check now. You'll just have to see when you're out of the restroom. That's amazing. Corvus is the best. Um. Anyway, so yeah. So so yeah. So I'll, I will. I'll run it. Um. <laughs> I'll run it between my index finger and my thumbnail. Then it'll tend to get a little curly. And then if you if you go the other way, it'll straighten out. Okay. So let's see if I can. Uh, do this now without everything being completely uh, earthquakey. Sorry, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of things in my life this week that have been making me um, want to say mind your own biscuits. Mostly, so the song lyric says, mind your own biscuits and life will be gravy. My personal philosophy this week has been, mind your own business, biscuits or I'll turn your face into gravy. Um, that's kind of where I'm at this week. I'm real glad. Tomorrow's my day off. I think everyone else is as well because nobody is going to get murdered in the face probably by me since my work week's almost over. Also, I know that Heather is now totally in suspense whilst trying to use the restroom. So, <laughs> that's kind of funny. So, round end of your chasing hammer. Hey, look. So much better when the camera's over there. So, that's going to give you your typical hammered texture. Now, of course, they also make texturing hammers that have specific patterns on them so when you hit your metal with your texturing hammer you're going to get the pattern that's on the surface like our checkerboards now you'll notice that the checkerboards you know to the casual eye don't look super different from the hammered bits but this is a round impression this is a square impression and then you've got your stripes And then something you can do with your stripes is you can. Oh, we have a fun game for sale stream, by the way, which I hope Essie, I think Essie finished. <clears throat> I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so this one's all nice and textured. So we have chasing hammer, texturing hammer, texturing hammer. Now let's go on to this piece. Um, so this is a riveting hammer. So this hammer is not technically made for texturing. This is actually made for making rivets, but this chisel end makes a really good texturing tool. So you can take that and
hammer on your metal and get a really cool texture that way. Now, also just hammering with a manky old hammer, like I'm talking go to a garage sale and find the nastiest, most beat up hammer that you possibly can. Hammer on your metal, it tends to give a really cool texture. Um, but let's do some area textures. So I have, okay, so this is actually an area texture stamp. This is an Impress Art stamp. Um, it's literally designed to hammer all over and make a texture. And of course, remember anytime you're hitting a steel stamp, you want to use either a, a brass hammer that is specifically designed for that or a household hammer. Alright, so that's what your area texture looks like and you can fill that in as close or as far apart as you want. If you want to use something like a centering punch that's going to make tiny little dots. Also another thing, and this is a, why did I put that up there? I need that now. Um, another thing that's fun for textures that you can get at the hardware store is what's called a nail set, um, which basically makes a little kind of tiny concentric circle texture and it's really fun. Okay, so this is your centering punch. Now you could do something very similar with a nail. Okay, and I actually did um, when we were in the pandemic and I had a tutorial that needed holes like this and I didn't have a centering punch. I literally used a nail that was sitting around my house. Um, one of the other fun things that you can use Sorry, I, I feel like Heather's coming out soon, so I'm just getting the picture ready. Um, is stuff that you have lying around the house that has texture, like for instance, filigrees. So um, filigrees, coins. Now, when you're doing this, you need to bear in mind that whatever you're using to make the texture is probably gonna get destroyed. So please don't use like your great great grandma's, you know, brooch or anything for this. But if you have something, well, hi, Shaquille, I'm teaching texturing. Please save up all of your comments for the sales stream and I shall try to answer them. Heather, this is what Corvus got me from Mexico. <laughs> See, she made the same noise. <laughs> That's so perfect! I love it. <laughs> there's there's another there's another view. Wow. I think it's actually on a shell. It's a it's, it's so great. It's, it is. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. Perfect. Cor Corvus is the best. It, she never wasn't. It's true, she never wasn't, but she's extra the best now. Yes. That that's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So if Are you're done with the what? Just cutting. I haven't Begun started the... yet. Heather's like, I'm going over there now <laughs> because you're about to make <laughs> lots of poundy <laughs> noises on the table. Do not like that noise. <laughs> oh, Jaquil, oh, oatmeal! I think is they're coming to take him away, or them away. I mean. Right? Lots. I, I Okay, but we're talking about actual pounding, not like pounding. Anyway, so if you have a piece with texture that you don't care about ruining, this is how you transfer the texture from your piece onto your metal. You take the um, piece of metal, you put it texture side down, and you grab a piece of painter's tape and you take your metal that you want to transfer it to and you're just going to tape it all down 
to your bench block. Now this is going to get really freaking loud. You're going to take your hammer, whether it be a dad blow hammer or a household hammer, and you are going to pound the shit out of this. Sorry, had... that was some great comic timing there because my light fell down and my camera went out <laughs> do, you, do you need me to hold that for you princess <laughs> it could just be like an angler fish I mean <laughs> what do, okay what angler do, fish do, for everybody <laughs> what do you think about this look I mean okay. I feel like I could totally rock this um you're gonna have to attach it to your neck rather than your hair, though. I don't think you have quite the anchor. <laughs> I have tape. I'll just hold it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Next year, I'm gonna have to. Okay, remind me. Stream. You have to remind me that next year I'm gonna be an anglerfish. Um, because <laughs> yes, that's too perfect. I could be a blobfish, <laughs> yeah, or a stonefish, or stonefish. You could be a lionfish. You'd I, be a great lionfish, actually, with I, the I, with the hair parts. But they don't actually look like real lions. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Next year, I'm going to be an anglerfish. <laughs> <laughs> I have fucking zip ties. It's not going down this way. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> well, please, while I aggressively zip tie my light to my camera. Oh, Ace! What the hell? Uh oh. Um. Uh oh. Thunder <laughs> scrumptious poultry <laughs> DX A bot What the hell? Oh, Ariel is making some treats for me. Yeah, fucking zip tie should absolutely be on the button list. But I don't actually know if it's a verb or a noun. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, so, so, so Heather, Heather advises against actually having intercourse with zip ties. Sharon Hammer agrees. <laughs> Stay away from sugar and sharp edges. Right, no, no sugar or zip ties near the cookie. And what the, what the hell are you doing, camera? You're, 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 you're limp. My camera's limp. And my zip ties are fucking. <laughs> I mean, what what do I do? When you, <laughs> you need to fluff your camera? My, well, my I I don't know. My camera's limp and my zip ties are fucking. And what do I do for the rest of this stream? Plus, I'm late. My my camera is limp. My zip ties are fucking, and I'm late. concerned about my physical health and well-being. <laughs> Everything is legitimately fine. That was all for comedic effect. Heather is is going to give me back my hammers now. I'm, I'm going to promise not to do any people or technology harm with the, with the hammers. She's backing away. So she's like, it, it's, it's like a 
plie drag that you're doing. <laughs> like, what is that step exactly? I don't know, but it gets me away fast, doesn't it? <laughs> well, no, it gets you away at a medium speed and with a lot of drama. <laughs> if you wanted to get away fast, you would just run. No, I can't do that. <laughs> or chasse. Chasse would be much faster than whatever you were doing. Oh, hi everybody! <laughs> Welcome to the Beating Dream stream where sometimes we do beating projects and sometimes we just go crazy. So, where, where, where did we leave our heroes before all of the innuendos happened? Here is where. I was, um, pounding, smashing, what the camp? What the hell are you looking at, camera? That no, that's all my cords. No one wants to see that nonsense. Seriously, that's like the chaos that happens outside of the approved sphere. Don't anybody judge me from my cord chaos, please. Um, so I was impressing some texture onto my metal, which I did banging. Thank you, Pam. I was banging. Before we before we went down the rabbit hole, so I did actually manage to impress some of the texture of my um, <laughs> oh, my filigree onto my metal. So so as far as um, <clears throat> sorry, I promise I'm not really gonna die. So as far as using things to texture metal, things you have to think about. Okay, the relative hardnesses of the two metals. So this is copper, this is brass. So the brass is harder than the copper, but the brass is significantly thinner. Just don't, Heather. I hear you. I'm, don't I'm, listen. No, I'm... That was because I coughed too much earlier, that's all. <laughs> um, so... It wasn't judgy, it was coughing. Uh, I felt like it was innuendo-y. Because I was talking much. about the relative hardnesses of the metals. I see. So, brass is harder than copper, but this brass is thinner than the copper. So once again, it's not now going... Now I'm judging. Well, fine! <laughs> I, I pretty much walked into that. Um, if you were using a coin, it would impress much more deeply because um, coins are generally made of metals that are harder than copper. Um, so, you know, you just kind of have to play around with that. And then the last of the textures was actually um, making something holy, which <laughs> oh, this dream. I know, right? No, but you weren't. You were not. Were you here? When you must have been, or maybe you were back here with an earbud in, ignoring stuff. But all of the Judith Lieber stuff that Carol's currently. Repairing and and she said something about one of one of the bags about This this bag is very religious and And Carol May was just like ah, And she's like it's it's holy Because it had lots of holes where the rhinestones were missing. This is bead store humor. This is why um, Some people think that working in the bead store is cool and really we are just gigantic nerds so, um, last thing is going to be to make a holy piece of metal. You can do that with a hole punch or with any old drill bit and your Dremel tool. When you're drilling metal, make sure that you have it on top of something that is not going to matter if you drill through it. Okay, I'm going to put some more holes in this holy piece of wood with my Dremel and I'm just going to turn it on and I'm just going to put some random holes in this metal. Okay, so now I've made holes in my metal. Now, one thing that you do need to be aware of when you're doing holes in your metal is that the back side is going to be very rough. So if you have access to some sandpaper, it's a good idea to just use that on the back side to kind of smooth everything down.
All right, and then we're gonna cut these into, I know, right? But it it's so satisfying, Corvus. It's so satisfying. Cause you're just like, bam, 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 bam. It's great. Also, I have a burn story to tell on the uh, sales stream. So that's gonna be fun. Okay, so now we're going to turn these into different shaped pieces. I'm not going to make these into a bracelet. Once again, that was just for um, optics as far as the photograph goes. So ways you can turn these into shaped pieces that you can then turn into pieces of jewelry. All right, easiest way, take a pair of metal shears um, and just cut it into the shape that you want. Um, now, your edges that you cut will be sharp, so make sure you, once again, have access to some of that sandpaper. 320 grit or so is good, and that you can take your sandpaper and just use it to smooth down that edge that you cut. It doesn't hurt if you're doing something like a square, a triangle, something that has pointy edges, to take sandpaper or a file. Nope, no file. But to take something like sandpaper or a file and knock down your corners so that they're not super pointy. Diana, is that you? Yeah. Yay! So that was a square. And, and then you can use your drill or a hole punch to punch your holes wherever you want. So if you want a square, you know, that sits horizontally, go here and here. If you want a diamond here and here, you could also do two holes here, 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 and here on each side. Um, you could also cut other shapes. You could cut a triangle. Once again, sandpaper on the edges, file or sandpaper on the corners, and then punch your holes wherever you want. And then of course the most fun of all of this, and we all knew we were going this way, is the disc cutter. I love disc cutters, they are fantastic, but only if you get a good one. Crappy ones are just as frustrating as half of my boyfriends in college. So. When you have a disc cutter, um, basically it gives you a series of pre-measured holes for discs and it gives you punches that match those holes. And so then I can take my textured metal, I can punch out discs of my pre-textured metal using my disc cutter. So let's go ahead and use this one right here. So I'm just going to put that in my disc cutter. You can see how I'm just going to line that up in that receptacle and then I'm going to twist this little lever that's going to tighten my disc cutter down. That's not the right punch there. Okay, so that goes in there. So when you have your punches, you're going to have the, the cutting edge, which is going to be angled, and then you're going to have the hammering edge, which is going to be not, and then we're just going to pound the crap out of this. It's going to be loud, so just be warned. So once you have pounded this enough, there we go. So then your punch will come through your cutter and there is your disc with your texture on it. Now you can also cut your discs and then texture them. That's totally valid. You don't have to texture them first, um, but sometimes it can be kind of fun. Just sort of do a bunch of textures on a piece of metal and then um, cut them all out after. All right, so I'm going to do one more disc cutter. Um, let's go ahead and do that with the, um, the Swiss cheese section like that. So once again, I'm going to tighten down my disc cutter. I'm going to find the punch that fits in the hole that I want, which is that one. I'm going to move it so that I don't smack the crap out of my camera. And that's where one of these big giant hammers is really helpful because you don't have to hit it as many times. So then here we go and that's my little Swiss cheese texture. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to do, I gotta do one more. I love disc cutters so much. 
Um, so let's go ahead and do the, um, let's do this. Let's do the dimpled texture. Okay, so there we go. And sometimes it can be fun to like align your texture not centered in the disc cutter. I think that's going to be cool. So we're going to take this one and we're going to drop that in there. So if you have a good disc cutter, your, your punches will match your holes exactly. If you have a cheapy disc cutter, not always. Which is why the expensive ones are so worth it. Oh, thank you, Ace, for keeping out your comments to yourself. All right. So that's how that one turned out. So um, after you've cut your discs, you are almost inevitably going to have um, some rough edges. So once again, 320 grit sandpaper and then also some uh, triple zero or quadruple zero steel wool can help you with that. All right, so that's going to be it for today with creating textured components in metal. Um, thank you all so much for hanging out with us on the beating dream stream this is my um destructified piece of metal Ooh, what the heck is that <laughs> so yeah this is my destructified piece of metal textured and cut um i have a few cut pieces here i've got discs and i've got um, some squares over here and a triangle so yeah so just fun ways that you can use hammers cutting implements etc to texture metal and then you can take these, you can create earrings from them. I know, Pam, I will. Earrings, um, necklace components, bracelets, etc. So, yes, <laughs> Pam asks me to hurry back. So, don't forget, it's Saturday night. That means we will have a live merchandise sale. There's a lot of amethyst in this pile, just so everybody knows. It's, it's going to be an amethyst-heavy sale for anybody who, who is an amethyst lover. But yes, so... <laughs> Thank you all so much for hanging out on the Beating Dreams live tutorial stream. I will be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream in just um, 20 to 30 minutes with the live merchandise sale. Are you okay? I... Yeah. Um, the opals, maybe not so much. Oh no. So, okay, I have a little bit of a mess. I scared me too, Corvus. I have, I've got glass in my boob right now. Um, so yeah, okay. I will be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream as soon as I clean up the mess I just made. And we will sell some beads and stuff and yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Not the <laughs> Thank you, I Corvus. I should have taken away the hammers. I know, right? Okay. Thank you, Corvus. We'll see y'all in a bit. All right, 30 minutes or so, maybe less. Bye. All right, do not move.